The titanic submersible that gripped the world's headlines met its end in what the US Coast Guard calls a catastrophic implosion that killed all five passengers aboard. But the search that led to this discovery and the race against time to find the passengers alive became a five-day multinational rescue operation that captured global attention. Not least due to the connection to the Titanic, the unsinkable British ship that met its tragic ending in 1912. Here's how it all unfolded and what we know so far about what happened. This is an incredibly complex search operation. We're losing time and we're losing opportunity to find them alive. Ocean Gate shouldn't have been doing what it was doing. On Saturday the 17th of June, Ocean Gate's Titan submersible prepares for its voyage to the century-old wreck of the Titanic. That day, British billionaire and adventurer Hamish Harding, one of those aboard the sub, posts online saying, a weather window has just opened up and we're going to attempt a dive tomorrow. He doesn't post online again. At 8 a.m. on Sunday, the Titan submersible begins its descent, triggering the 96-hour countdown, which is the window of oxygen supply the vessel has from the time it's sealed. It should be a two-hour descent to the wreck of the Titanic, which lies at a depth of 12,500 feet in the North Atlantic Ocean. But one hour and 45 minutes after setting off, communications between the sub and the surface vessel are lost. This moment, it later transpires, is seemingly important. The submersible has been scheduled to return to the surface at 3 p.m., but it fails to appear. The Coast Guard is notified at 5.40 p.m. By Monday, US and Canadian ships and planes are swarming the area, some dropping sonar buoys that can monitor to a depth of 13,000 feet. Search teams stress that this is a remote area and a challenge to conduct a search. Officials also ask commercial vessels for help. On Tuesday, noises, reported to be banging sounds, are detected over several hours by a Canadian aircraft, which is equipped with gear to trace submarines. The noises temporarily offer hope that the Titan is still intact and that its occupants are alive and trying to communicate by banging on the hull. Officials later say analysis of the sound is inconclusive. At this point, Hamish Harding's friend says hopes are not high. As it stands right now, it would be a miracle if they are recovered alive. At 2 a.m. on Wednesday, the U.S. Coast Guard announces it's deploying remotely operated vehicle searches to the area where the sounds were detected. A French research ship equipped with a deep-sea diving vessel makes its way to the search area. The surface search is now approximately two times the size of Connecticut, and the subsurface search is up to two and a half miles deep. On Thursday at 6 a.m. Eastern Time, the 96-hour oxygen window closes, diminishing any last hopes of finding the passengers alive. At 2 p.m., a debris field found on the seabed is confirmed to contain pieces of the Titan submersible. The pieces were found by a robotic diving vehicle deployed from a Canadian ship lying some 1,600 feet from the bow of the Titanic. The US Coast Guard confirms the debris is consistent with the loss of the pressure chamber and an implosion, and that there were no survivors. So, when did the sub meet its fate? During the search operation, sonar boys in the water didn't detect any loud or violent noise that would have been generated by an implosion. That suggests it happened before the search began, the position of the debris field near the Titanic seems to suggest the failure occurred near the end of its descent, all the way back on Sunday around 9.45 a.m., when contact with the sub was lost. Separately, it's been reported that acoustic data detected by the U.S. Navy had an anomaly consistent with an implosion or explosion near the submersible's location when its communications were lost. In an interview with Reuters, James Cameron, who directed the Oscar-winning movie Titanic and has ventured to the wreck in subs himself, said he learned of the acoustic findings within a day and deduced what it meant. Search, 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 four days of search. They're searching everywhere. They're run they were running around with their hair on fire. The sub was right where it was. It was literally on the seafloor below its last known position. Look, Monday morning when I first found out about the incident, Within an hour and a half, I had the following information. They were on descent. They were at 3,500 feet. 
they lost comms and tracking. We got confirmation within an hour that there had been a loud bang at the same time that the sub was, that comms were lost. I knew what happened. Sub imploded. I, I sent emails to everybody I know. I said, we've lost some friends. The sub has imploded. I really hoped and prayed I was wrong, but I knew it wasn't. 